So how does TIF work and what's Carmel's strategy? So how does the city make sure that its development, especially in the core, is this kind of tax generating, walkable, desirable development? We work with the private sector and enter into public-private partnerships, the center point of which is often a tax increment financing related deal. So how does tax increment finance work and how do we incentivize this type of development? The city and the developer come up with a project that's going to add a lot more assessed value to the parcel that the project is going to be on. We have the ability to capture the future taxes that that new project is going to pay for the next 25 years and use it to pay off a loan that funds infrastructure to make that project happen in the first place. Let's consider a couple of examples of how we use TIP. First is the brand new car headquarters along US 31. The city worked with the company to structure a project where 90% of the TIF from the project was used to fund the parking garage for CAR. First, CAR would not have built their permanent world headquarters in Carmel if not for the TIF incentive. Second, what the city gets in return, other than a world-class company, is the fact that its employees are parking in a garage and not 10 acres of ugly surface parking. What we have instead is room for the next world headquarters to pop up right alongside CAR. It's an example of using TIF the right way. Another project worth pointing out is the Merchants Bank headquarters and the rail yard apartment complex that are next to Midtown Plaza along the Monon. The city worked a public-private partnership to take the future taxes from those two buildings to help fund a parking garage inside the apartment complex. So what does the city get as a result? First, we have two beautiful buildings without any ugly parking lots. B, that garage is perfectly flexed between daytime workers in the corporate office and evening residents of the apartment complex. C, that parking garage is also open to the public for users of the Midtown Plaza. And D, if not for that tax increment finance deal, none of those structures would be standing today. That's the kind of long-term planning that locks in a tax base and makes the city desirable to employees at the same time. To understand why these TIF projects are so important, let's consider a metric, assessed value per acre. Assessed value per acre determines how much taxes a parcel is going to pay. If you consider what the market would build without city involvement, and we already talked about neighborhoods, you can think about retail. Carmel's Target is a really nice big box store on the west side. It's assessed at around $650,000 per acre. So while it pays taxes based on that assessment, the city still has to provide police coverage, fire coverage, snow removal, and all these other annual and long-term uh, costs and services. Next, consider office buildings along US 31 that we're all familiar with. The ones built in the last 30 years while really nice, still sit in large parking lots. So on a per acre basis, they're still going to be assessing at a million or a million and a half per acre. Now consider the kind of projects that happen as part of public-private partnerships where TIF is involved. One project we're all familiar with is Sophia Square. It's right in the heart of our arts and design district. Sophia Square sits on two acres and is assessed at almost $50 million. As compared to the big box store on our west side, it generates 50 times the taxes on a per acre basis. And we have a free underground parking garage and a public plaza in the middle and a beautiful, beautiful building. We use TIF to build up a city in a way that makes it desirable, but also in a way that builds up a tax base that the market would never be able to match. Mayor Brainerd has used TIF for the last 20 years to transform our central core, project by project. This includes projects that are about to start, like Magnolia and Melange in the central core, especially Lot 1 that's going to have a public parking garage, office, and apartments. And it includes existing projects we're all familiar with. The Indiana Design Center, with over 30 local businesses and a free underground parking garage. 
The Monon and Main project that includes Anthony's Chop House, as well as 40,000 square feet of office space, for sale residential and retail, all parked in a free parking garage. Our Midtown project with the Allied Solutions headquarters in Sun King, all planned out and all parked inside a parking garage possible because of TIF. Another TIF project is the Presidium, that now includes five corporate headquarters, our first for sale condo building, as well as apartments and other restaurants that all sit on 650 free underground parking spaces for everybody to use. It's a perfect TIF project. Finally, you can't talk about the success of TIF in Carmel without discussing Carmel City Center, what the Urban Land Institute labeled just a few years ago as one of three neighborhoods in America that are emerging as economic powerhouses. City Center started off as just farmland and project by project, building by building, because of TIF, we have built a brand new walkable and desirable downtown that's going to generate taxes for the city for hundreds of years.